There's a type of yarn out there that's so popular that just about every yarn company has their own variety. While I can't say which one came first, I can say that if you do a quick search, you'll find all sorts of options. Face and dish scrubbies are one of the most practical things you can crochet, and with all of the specialized yarn options, you can make it custom for what you need. So if you've been boycotting your hooks because it's just too warm to have yarn in your lap, I hear ya, but these little scrubbies are the perfect way to get you back into your happy place. And they're pretty simple too. All the extra surface area created by these layers makes this the best one I've used so far. It's made up of two main sections, a flat circle base and maze-like ridges. You can use any variety of scrub yarn, but it's best to make your first one out of some smooth cotton like these two. That way you can see the stitches as you learn the pattern. So this pattern will ask you to start off with a magic ring. Wrap the yarn around your two fingers, slide your hook under the two strands, pull the back strand in front of the first, and you kind of have to move your hook like that to get it to work. Make a chain and another chain. Then you can remove this from your fingers. Now don't touch your tail, you need to work over that. So make eight half double crochets in your magic loop. And if you are really good about working over your tail, when you pull that, it should tighten it all up and you're good to go. The magic ring is a tricky one to master, so that's why we spent some time on it, but that's probably the most difficult part of the entire project. Now, if the magic ring is not an option for you, check out the video I have linked in the description for an easy workaround. By the way, we're just working a normal crochet circle here, nothing fancy. So if you're already familiar with how to do this and kind of the formula, if you will, of how to crochet in a circle, then yeah, we're just following that step by step. The formula for a perfectly round circle is simple. The number of stitches in your first round, eight in our case, is the number of stitches you need to add to your stitch count every single round. But they can't just go anywhere. For the circle to be perfectly round and stay flat, they need to be evenly spaced throughout the round. So following this formula, Round two needs 16 stitches. And to do that evenly, there's only one way to do that, two stitches in every stitch. Round three needs 24 stitches. And to evenly space the eight additional stitches here, every other stitch will have one of those extras. These two for one specials are usually just called increases. Round four needs 32 stitches. And this time to evenly space the additional stitches, we need to increase every third stitch. In other words, we have two stitches in between those increases. You'll also notice this pattern has you work the round in a spiral. So that just means you're not joining with the slip stitch at the end of the round. You just kind of jump up to the next level. By the way, if you're wondering where you can find the pattern, I'll have the links in the description below and a pinned comment so it's easy for you to find. You can view the pattern completely free on our website, or if you wanna support the channel, you can pick up the PDF from our shop. Every first stitch of a new round will have two half double crochets in it, and for rounds three and four, that means your last stitch will only have one. If it doesn't, that's your visual cue that something went wrong somewhere within that round. Using a stitch marker in the first stitch will help you keep track of it all. And again, don't forget to crochet in the back loops only. These extra loops are really important for the next step. From here, we're going to add those layers. Chain one, and then we're gonna turn it in kind of a weird way so that you can crochet in that direction. Now we're not doing anything with this chain one. It doesn't count as a stitch. We're kind of just using it as a way to make our edge here a little bit more slanted, if that makes sense. Ignore the first stitch here and work a double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch. And with the magic of video editing, I've made it back around to my stitch marker. I mean, you didn't honestly wanna see all of that, did you? Good. You can remove your marker at this point and you'll still work a double crochet in that stitch. 
The remaining loops are the stitch placement for the rest of the double crochets in this project. And since we worked the circle in a spiral, you'll just go around and around until you reach the center. Now this is all pretty easy to see with a smooth yarn like this, but that's not necessarily the case with the other yarn options. Fortunately, not being able to see where to put your stitches means the yarn is really good at concealing any mistakes that you might make. Another little tip I have for working with this yarn that not a lot of people think about is your lighting. If you're working on these in the evening and you have just the light of the TV or maybe a lamp across the room, and especially if you're working with a darker color yarn, you're probably gonna have more problems. And we can fasten off. Pull that through the loop on your hook, totally fine. Find the center of your ring. Right on through that, it's gonna pull it down so it like tapers off and it looks really nice. It looks like we put a ton of effort into it, but we really didn't. And then run the tail around the opening. Another thing you can do is tie the two ends together. You can get away with it a lot more with like one of these types of yarns because there's no stitch definition. You really can't see what's going on here. So when you tie the two tails and then trim, you can't even tell that it's there. But for smoother yarns, if you want it to look a little neater on the back, this is what I would do. These three have been my go-to for the past several weeks and it's the best time I've spent crocheting a project. The smooth cotton is perfect for washing my face. These made with scrubby cotton are like my everyday dish scrubbies. And these I like to use for tough cooked on stains. Now these scrubbies have definitely been the best thing that has happened to my face, my kitchen, my ditch ditches. <laughs> oh guys, it's been a long day. I'll have a link to the free pattern in the description below as well as a pinned comment. If you wanna support the channel, I'll also have a link to where you can buy the PDF to this pattern. Happy hooking and I'll see you in the next one.